I'm talking about the St. Augustine's prayer book. And the question that's asked is, are there uh, various types, are some different? And the answer is yes, indeed. Uh, the Order of the Holy Cross was founded in West Park, New York, in the United States as a religious order, an obviously Anglo-Catholic religious order. But what occurred is while the Franciscans had produced the Anglican Missal and the Cowley Fathers, a.k.a. the SSJE, Society of St. John the Evangelist, had produced the American Missal, the average person did not have a, a booklet that, or book that they could take uh, into the church for mass that they could follow. The only people's version was called the People's Anglican Missal. Very expensive. In fact, most of us could not afford it. So as a result, we were very, very grateful uh, that the first edition of the St. Augustine's Prayer Book occurred the year after I was born, namely in 1947. It continued in just a reprint, reprint, reprint. Reason? In 47, didn't know how many uh, would be sold. However, by 1949, it had to be reprinted. And it was reprinted in 1949, 1950, 52, 53, 54, 56, 57, 59, 61, 62, 63, 64, and 65, almost totally and completely the same. Now, what happened is, in the mid-1960s, something called liturgical renewal came into being. And it was conditioned to a large extent by the Roman Catholic Church, but it also had affected a number of liturgical scholars in the Episcopal Church and Anglicanism as a whole. So the Order of the Holy Cross was faced with a decision. They stopped doing what was called the monastic diurnal, which was the, the standard book that they used for their daily office, and they shifted into a whole new fourfold office. At the same time, they started using a new Mass. In 1967, in the Episcopal Church, a, a liturgy entitled the Liturgy of the Lord's Supper was introduced to the Episcopal Church. It then uh, eventually became what was called the Green Book, the Zebra Book, Son of Zebra Book, and then the draft uh, proposed Book of Common Prayer, and then the proposed Book of Common Prayer, and then the Book of Common Prayer. So the 1979 Book of Common Prayer is the heir to all of those iterations, but it was initiated with something called the 1967 Liturgy of the Lord's Supper. So in the year 1967, the Order of the Holy Cross adopted that Liturgy of the Lord's Supper as their basic mass, and they determined that they needed to change everything in the Mass in the St. Augustine's Prayer Book. They also changed the section as it relates to confession, and they went from a long list of things you used to look at for confession to general questions. Now then, in the year 1993, they came up with another revision which took into account all of the changes that had been put into the 1979 Book of Common Prayer. Translated, what that means is the vast majority of Anglo-Catholics who went to parishes like St. Timothy's were lost because that St. Augustine's prayer book did not jibe with what they were using in the Missal and so on. And then what occurred is that after th that, a number of printings occurred until the most recent revised of 2014, which was produced as a partnership between Forward Press and the Order of the Holy Cross. On the other hand, because many of us were concerned because we no longer had St. Augustine's prayer book available and the Order of the Holy Cross no longer prints the older versions, several groups have purchased the rights to the uh, this book, St. Augustine's Prayer Book. So there are now effectively two St. Augustine's Prayer Books out there. The beautifully bound leather version, which nonetheless 
is a um, uh, uh, is a very modernized one that matches up with the 79 Book of Common Prayer with a number of the still uh, things, things in there which are of some interest to people from earlier usages. And this one, which is one of the two traditional types that are still out there. And so, for example, if a person wanted to order the more traditional one, what they would have to do is they would have to go to a different printing company than the one, or publishing company, uh, than, uh, than this one. So, long answer to a very good question. And so, when the parish press was in the process of attempting to make certain elements of the St. Augustine's prayer book available, we made official contact with the Order of the Holy Cross, and they would not give any permission to use the new one. And that was not at all a problem for us. And the reason that was not a problem for us is because of the fact that this was we did not want to use the new Stations of the Cross, for example. This one, on the other hand, is what, generally speaking, has been used at St. Timothy's for the Stations of the Cross, lo these many years. And so the parish press has permission to use any and all parts of this book. And uh, nobody, no, and that's because the parish press has now rights uh, that we're developing more and more of that might be amazing to you that I'll be announcing. And our goal at the parish press is to make more traditional elements made available uh, with increasing use. Now, now that you see these, they both have a similar uh, goal. So I'll explain that to you. The St. Augustine's prayer book was really um, designed uh, to have the mass in there with all the extras. Put differently, that means that if a person were brought up on the 1929 or 28 Book of Common Prayer, the 29 was the proposed book in England, so I got confused for a second. The 1928 American Book of Common Prayer, they would find that it wouldn't have worked at a place like St. Timothy's because you'd want to know where all those extras came from. So this, this book added all those extras that you're accustomed to, like the preparation of the foot of the altar, like the asperges, like the last gospel, all those things that you have in, it's, I'm speaking to St. Timothy's people here, folks, to the red book that is in the pews, which, has, which is in effect, mass-wise, the St. Augustine's prayer book. Now that if you take it from there, you will notice in the St. Augustine's prayer book that it goes beyond that. It has some guidelines in there, Christian's obligations. It makes clear uh, certain things like uh, when do we abstain from meat, what do we do during Lent and Advent, what are the customs and the traditions. So they're all written in there. It also has the common forms like the Lord's Prayer, the Hail Mary, uh, the Gloria Patri, because the 79 Book of Common Prayer totally rewrote the Gloria Patri, and it's a bad translation. An example would be uh, the original and it's from the Latin is glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Now that comes from uh, the ending per omnia secula seculorum and if you know anything about the word secular then you understand that that comes from the word for world. world. So it, 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 roughly speaking now, the translation that was done by what is called the ICET people, International Conference of English Text, translated badly the Gloria Patri to glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Will be forever is uh, not a very good translation for, from per omnia secula seculorum, or is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. One could argue that that is an appropriate way of speaking English today, 
uh, but I think the vast majority of people today recognize that it fell flat. It almost fell as flat as being able to say, Dominus Bobiscum, et cum right, et cum spiritu tuo, and you will notice that et cum spiritu tuo tuo, uh, et cum spiritu tuo, does not translate into and also with you. So the English was the only uh, group, the English translations, who did that. The Spanish, even when they modernized their rights, continued to keep the word spirit. So that's why most liturgical scholars today and translators are translating it to and with your spirit, if it is a uh, modern translation. Uh, and then if it is the... Um, traditional Elizabethan than in with thy spirit. So the St. Augustine's prayer book, most modern one, will take into account all of the modern translations. So these lay form, uh, the forms of prayer that are found in this would be the forms of prayer in Elizabethan English for the most part, with various midday prayers, morning prayers, evening prayers, prayers and thanksgiving all the prayers that a person would say before and after communion. Both of these books have that. Uh, it's just that the newest one would have all the contemporary English because that became the preferred usage at the Order of the Holy Cross. And so now we then get into a, a variety of usages of confession, telling us how to prepare for confession, benediction of the Blessed Sacrament, visits to the Blessed Sacrament, Stations of the cross, prayers for the sick, how requiem mass is different from a regular mass, prayers for the dying, and litanies and devotions and novenas, and visits to the Christmas crib where you go and you can actually use your book when you visit during the Christmas season. Um, and then also the holy hour, uh, very helpful for when you spend your hour in the garden for Maundy Thursday. So. To put it in a different way, Book of Common Prayer may say we have Monday, Thursday, and you can make a visit. This tells you what to say when you make your visit. So it puts the meat on the bones. But it's decidedly, they're both decidedly traditional in the sense that uh, the average, for, I don't use the term often, but evangelical or low church evangelical would not find these to be highly edifying. Uh, whereas uh, the people come out of our prevailing uh, tradition of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church always have found these to be welcome additions to their spiritual lives and to their piety.